Pigeon, Mike Torpy, everybody. Can they say hello? Hey. Got definitely the coolest beard in the business. Please. Okay, so, Mike, we're just going to uh, pretend these people aren't here. We're going to talk about the car. I can do that? Okay. I, knew, I really enjoyed these last couple of days preparing with him, by the way. So, hopefully, you, we'll get some of this uh, interesting details out. So, first off, how does it feel? When you, you know, I mean, look, it's a job at the end of the day, we all have, I understand. But when you get assigned a vehicle that doesn't exist yet, that, that when, how do you develop the theme and how did it feel when you got this? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I was mentioning to you a little bit earlier, these, these are the projects that we kind of dream about getting, usually. Um, Just that kind of blank slate? Yeah, yeah blank slate. Um, no baggage ahead of time, and, you know, particularly with Nero, a chance to like really kind of, um, from the ground up, uh, Reimagine what what a hybrid is, uh, what it should be, like what people probably really would like out of their cars. And what was the um, what would we kind of identify as being where the the hybrid customer was, where their head was today? Ah, uh, well, you know, it was interesting. Like the more we the more we studied the uh, lay of the hybrid land, uh, we realized that uh, there's there's a lot to love about hybrids, but certainly styling isn't one of those things. Okay. In a lot of cases. Um, and uh, what we what we kind of buy the cars anyway. We see some decent numbers of them. Out yeah, there. they are. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, people people buy hybrids. We we kind of realized um, in spite of their style, in spite which, of style. which is kind of crazy. So like yeah. the idea to really kind of like analyze what what would be a pretty honest uh, approach to styling a hybrid vehicle um, based on how people they've been in the marketplace twenty years now. Yeah. Um, how do people truly use them? How do they view them? And uh, what's kind of below the surface, uh, like a subconscious um, uh, longing for what the car could could be and how it could look. Okay, so you've got this. You got this uh, blank slate. We got to come up with a cool theme now. Yeah. Up on the screen here, we see a few things that were <laughs> kind of guiding posts for you in the development of this car. They were. Yeah, we uh, we we kind of uh, um, like I mentioned to you some uh, kind of keywords that started to kind of uh, yeah. center the surface. We realized that uh, hybrid drivers are like uh, at their core, they're. Uh, Optimizers, okay. and uh, you know, I guess I mean that not just in the sense of like getting a lot of you know, miles per gallon, but like they, they use the crap out of these things. They mm -hmm. load them full uh, with family and gear. They camp with them. Uh, they take them. They take Camping them. Camping Is that what you're claiming? There's there's you're crazy. Seeing that, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna, like I'm gonna throw another uh, you know uh, design abomination uh, from history out there. The yeah. gas the gas tank. The gas tank. Ladies and gentlemen, he's brought the gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is gonna be. Good. I had to go there. <laughs> Um, you've, you've seen those tents that people bought. That people yeah, coupled on. There's, there's a there's a there's a burgeoning market for tents for Prius. People camp in Priuses. Now. There's, there's like camper kits for these things. So, um, so they're 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 again buying despite the styling, but wanting to use it a lot of ways. Yeah, I think people are kind of yeah they're they're, they're trying to push the car <coughs> someplace that isn't you know, and they're, they're driving you around like a like an SUV CUV. And they're not shying away from rain snow. So that's why so, we're looking at here the. Uh, Modern boot, so that kind of uh, utility side of it. Yeah. Uh, carbon fiber airplane design there, so it's still sleek and tech. Exactly. Uh, yeah. the, the Tiger, we got to talk about the Tiger now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Any chance to see the Tiger? It's cute, but, uh, um, so, yeah, now was, you did something interesting. And this is what, again, talking to designers, as you guys know, can, you get some interesting facts. Uh, you, you had a reasonably tight time frame to come up with something interesting for this car. Absolutely. And as we all do, when he's on the phone, he doodles. <laughs> now, I draw, as I showed you earlier, I, for some reason this is probably some insight into my brain, which I probably don't want to share, but I kind of like draw lots of little geometric arrows and just little boxes and boring things. He draws colors. All right, cool guy. And you kind of came up with this vehicle in the telephone sketch. So talk about that. Yeah, I guess uh, we, we have this, we have this uh, um, kind of um, legend amongst the, the car designers that I've, that I've worked with and met. Uh, the whole idea of the telephone sketch, uh, is, is ki as kitschy as it sounds, like especially when you're trying to come up with something brand new, we've got that, uh, that board of images that you guys just saw, and we kind of come up with some kind of keywords of like this kind of rugged, modern, efficient mm -hmm. kind of sense, you know, like, and that, that sounds great, but like, what does that look like, you know? Mm -hmm. So your, your, your subconscious brain's doing a pretty good job of on that. If you think about it too hard in your frontal lobes, like you're, you're going to get nowhere. You're going to overanalyze it. So often when you're on the phone chatting with somebody, and you're doodling, you're half thinking about it. But the part of your brain that you need to just let do its job kind of comes to the surface. And this is what your brain is. Yeah, that's that's the minute that man, I gotta hang up the phone and like I've got it. You know, like there's something to run with. And this is like the first doodle that, that really started to make sense. 
at this point, and like a lot of the it started to evolve. It did, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of the stuff that kind of came from that, like the idea that like you, why don't we do a, a vehicle that's got like a real nice stance, you know, right? Like, not, not enough lines. Like let's work real hard and try and get like a shoulder <laughs> to this part, right? Um, and make this this thing look aggressive but not um, frightening. Okay. Well, you, so, and, and one of the things I've enjoyed uh, these last couple of days talking with you about is you know where some of the, some of the legends of the business. Raymond Lowy, a lot of people know that name. Oh, yeah. What was the term? That, oh yeah, it's interesting. It's got an acronym, right? Yeah, there's an acronym, and this is kind of interesting about talking with each successive generation of uh, new product design or architecture, um, uh, you know, fashion, etc. Uh, the acronym is Maya. You guys have heard it's like most accept, most advanced, yet still acceptable to the to the public. And, um, you can push too far with a lot of these things. And you just when you, when you cross that threshold, whatever that is, like people just walk away. Right. And they've lost them. So um, design is is a path. You know, where you, you can't just shortcut to the to the finish. Like maybe cars will, you know, be unrecognizable to us at some point. You can't you can't leap there. You have to we're, we're getting there. So. And kind of what you were saying earlier that. Uh, uh, crop of hybrids are kind of pushing the boundary a little bit, and they've, they've had some success with that. We're, we see a bigger opportunity for those that are a bit more pushing, but not crazy. Well, here's what's interesting: like it, it seems uh, the most radical thing we could do with this car is potentially to do a car that didn't look radically like a hybrid. How radical is it? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of radical. So, um, yeah, I guess we, we, we've had we've had vehicles like the Prius for, for 20 years, we mentioned. And, um, at the beginning of a lot of these technologies, there's a tendency to kind of like almost like fetish, fetishize. 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 Fetish it's a hard word to say. We want to what does that mean exactly? Um, I guess we kind of like overly celebrate the technology. And mm. um, you, know, you get it just technology for technology's sake, like force it. Yeah, you know, it's like you want to, those first cars wanted to make damn sure everybody knew you were driving a hybrid. Right. There was no mistaking it for anything else. The profile, the styling, like everything was over the top. but. That speaks to a certain um, you want attention for what you're doing. I think there was that episode of South Park with, with the smug at oh. Bigfoot Jr. Yeah. driving that Prius. Uh, you're telling a real <laughs> car journalist about that episode. <laughs> yeah, we all we all know that. Yes, um, but we're we're clearly at a point where not everybody buys these cars for that, that point anymore. You know? and so we we think the Nero is going to kind of nail on that. One of the themes that was, I think, just shown earlier, and obviously comes out when I look at the car and drive the car, is rugged modern efficiency. Yes. Uh, is there anything about this particular design that you want to make sure that uh, the team here notices when they're spending yeah. time with it, when they see it on the road, when they see it in the Super Bowl lab, as Michael mentioned? For sure, yeah, I guess uh, you guys have handed me a pretty handy little laser pointer. So yes, go for it. Um, I guess things that we're, we're most proud of that we were able to accomplish with the car, which were, were a challenge just because we hit we had to hit the aero targets. You know, it wasn't just purely styling something. So, right. Um, you know, the fact that we, we do have a nice, strong, developed shoulder through the whole vehicle, like that this isn't a shoulderless, like just lunchbox looking looking vehicle. It's a handsome vehicle in its own right. Um, worked real hard to get a, a very premium looking uh, DLO to the vehicle that's kind of in, in some ways reminiscent of what goes on with our Sportage and Sorrento. You know, there's kind of a family resemblance here, so it's kind of got uh, mm -hmm. premium uh, tie-in to those vehicles that are, that are SRV, CUV. Um, kind of a ruggedized lower to the whole vehicle and uh, I guess not, not hitting people over the head with it, but there's, there's, like, there's little touches to the vehicle that really kind of speak to the fact that you're not handling this with, with kid gloves like a little uh, fragile, um, hyper-efficient transportation it's, you know, it's a style to be to be used right now. And we got some nice details on the back as well. Uh, yeah, we, you know, again, here's the thing, like, it, apart from a few of these, like, signature technical elements that we've kind of thrown in, um, you could mistake this just for any other handsomely styled crossover right. utility, and that was, that was really the goal, too. You know, we, we wanted to make sure that the lamps looked very technical, uh, those spoke to pretty good high technology sense, but, like, luxury vehicles, do this anyway, too. You know? yeah, yeah, I mean, we're time to time, I just uh, want to point that out. Luxury SUVs are generally pretty traditional and normal, but yet non luxury get, gets pushed into this kind of curious category. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we, Why we, is that? We're, you know, there's like this presumption, there's like a seemingly like unspoken presumption that unless you are of a certain economic class, like um, you won't appreciate. 
just a maturely styled hybrid. Like you need to have like this kind of cracker jack toy. Right. Like, so you know, because look at me. I don't know. But clearly, people aren't all looking for that. You know, we think that we've got to get an alternative to that. So, oh, uh, you know, just real quick, I want to point out how great would it be to have a cool sketch like that and have your name down at the bottom? Of it? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm insanely jealous of that. I just want to call that out. Uh, you can see how the vehicle really kind of then uh, became more kind of uh, coalesced into what we see today. Coefficient of drag, as you point out, while you were able to maintain the design that you were very keen on yes. here, we still got uh, 0.29 coefficient of drag, which is really Here's quite amazing. Right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, because you, usually when you want to be pushing the, the arrow on the car, you lose spirit. You lose, shall we say. Yeah. So congratulations, you've done a fantastic job <laughs> keeping that together. So let's talk a little bit about the interior of the car. Yeah. Uh, now you told me an interesting story about uh, the interior designer, Brian, who was unfortunately not with us today, but he wanted me to share something. Uh -huh. Oh, you yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Brian, Brian Peterson, he's, uh, he's a pretty pretty talented guy. He's, he's young on the younger end of the spectrum for, uh, for a career. I think he's still under 30. But uh, he already styled the interior of the Sportage, mm -hmm. I believe, and I'm trying to remember which other vehicle I think. Uh, He's got at least two to his name already. He's going to list well, it seems right. what he's good at is, is having the, ex you know, making the interior and the exterior seem like they actually. Oh, uh, yeah, stop. absolutely. Yeah, keep me on track. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, what, what did he say about, uh, uh, tell us the. Uh, oh, yeah, the two spaces. The two spaces. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is something, um, it's early in the morning, you may not want to hear this, but I thought it was interesting. So, go ahead. <laughs> um, Brian, Brian raised the point when he was, when he was working on this interior. He, 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 uh, he brought up the fact that apart from um, the interior of your car, Yes. Um, there's really only one other space that's that small that you spend time in alone <laughs> a lot. And, uh, oh, we have some uh, people assuming <laughs> what we're saying. Yes. <laughs> and uh, his his take was uh, you you want these these areas to be um, kind of serene and um, you know <laughs> simple to use. Simple, you know, like you know, like why would you complicate some of these spaces and want it to be a very relaxing space? And yet, uh, as you move, especially into hybrids, oftentimes the interiors get ever more complicated and more technical and like there's more more stuff kind of like screaming at you and even these things like why would you why would you do that to a space where like a lot of I think this is the, the, the kind of big takeaway too is you know like this is high technology but like why does it have to scream at you? So, right. Um, so that's kind of a kind of a override of theme of this vehicle, the interior and exterior. It's it's technology, but it's kind of invisible. So yeah. we think oh. that's a big window for that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm if I'm hitting the the, the, um, the last little bit of that uh, tail. There was uh, he's he's a bit bit young to have remembered when Night Rider TV show came out, but uh, that very first episode when uh, when David Hasselhoff was first shown Kit. Yeah, and he hops in the thing, and it's got this amazingly digi digitized dashboard. His he wasn't impressed. Okay. His, his response was simply like, "What is this, like Darth Vader's bathroom?" Uh, right. Right. Uh, <laughs> Those GM interiors were something else back then. So, like, we, we we made a real strong effort with the vehicle inside and out to, um, as you're just alluding to, um, try and work towards the idea that when it's done right, technology is invisible. Right. You know, all these things that are done for you, like you don't you don't need to have screaming. So, because there it is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Torpy. <laughs>